Hello there, Creative Pro friends. Kara Plichinich here, and today I'm going to show you how to clean up any fabulous vacation pictures from your summer travels where maybe some people snuck into your frame that you really didn't plan to include. So I'm going to show you how easy it is to do that. So let's say we want to get rid of this couple here. I'm just going to grab the lasso tool and I'm just going to make a selection around them. And I'm going to make sure that down here I'm including any of their shadows or reflection. Because if we don't, what Photoshop tends to do, and I just lost my selection, what Photoshop tends to do is fill in something for those shadows or reflections. So if you don't include those shadows or reflections in your selection, Photoshop is gonna notice that there's a shadow or reflection there and it's gonna generate something to cast that shadow or reflection. So we can see little reflections down here. And so I wanna make sure and include that. All right, so we've got this selected and now I'm looking at the contextual taskbar here. If yours doesn't show up, just go to the window menu and choose contextual taskbar. Then we're gonna click generative fill. We're gonna leave the prompt blank and just click generate. Photoshop's gonna create a new layer. It's gonna analyze the image and any reflections or shadows in the area and ta-da, that's pretty amazing. It also is gonna open up the properties panel where we can choose from three different renderings, three different fill options for that. So I think that one looks really good. Let's move over here and to try the same thing in a slightly different way, I'm gonna to switch to the object selection tool, part of the W family. You'll notice that I'm rolling over and it's not seeing her, and that's because I'm on this generative fill layer. So we can either switch to the background layer or we can come up and choose sample all layers. And now it's gonna see her. So I'm gonna click on her. It's seeing her purse as separate. So I'm gonna hold shift to click on that. And we can see it's left like this funny little hole here and it's not including the contact shadow right under her foot. So to clean that up a little bit, I'm gonna to switch to the lasso tool and hold shift so that I'm adding to the selection. And I'm just gonna clean up that little blip right there. And I wanna make sure I get the shadow area around her. And then let's just expand this a little bit so it's not such a tight fit. So we'll go to select, modify, expand, and I'll just say 40 pixels, and there we go. So now we have a good loose selection to repeat that same process. So we selected her as like a starting point using the object selection tool, and then I modified it a little bit with the lasso tool, and then we expanded the whole thing just to give us a little bit of a buffer. Again, we'll click Generative Fill, we'll leave the prompt blank and click Generate. That just never gets old, right? Like that's amazing. And here we have a couple of different options for how, how it fills in. I don't know, I kinda like just the first one. So how cool is that? Another really simple tool for removing things is the Remove tool. It is bundled up with the J family and the healing brush tool, patch tool, etc. So the icon is the little band-aid with the magical stardust. And this tool, you'll notice it's not gonna let us work on a layer like one of the generative fill layers. So we can create a blank layer, and then we want to make sure that we have sample all layers turned on in the control panel. Then it works just like a brush, so we can change the brush size by using the left and right bracket keys on the keyboard next to the letter P. And then all we have to do is paint over the thing we wanna get rid of. And when we let go, Photoshop completes the selection and <laughs> fills in the area behind it. Amazing. So a couple of differences are one, that it, it doesn't generate its own layer. So 
whether you want to work on a blank layer or a copied layer like of the background or something that is up to you but you you need to create the layer that you want it to paint on and then it doesn't give you options the way that generative fill does it's just quick and dirty but it's awesome so just like that, we went from this image here to this image, and wow, what a difference, right? So hopefully you find that as helpful as I do. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to give it a like and subscribe to our channel. And for thousands more how-to articles and tutorials, visit our website, creativepro.com, and become a member today. Thanks for learning with us.